that one turn. <laughs> that one having turn. Wa- having watched Gallagher, as you said, like run around a lot, press a lot, misfire a few passes. A younger Jordan Henderson kind of vibe. Yeah, uh, maybe makes that turn. I'm like, right. <laughs> <laughs> It's Monday again, everybody, and what a holy Monday. Pete Donaldson, you've got a tash. Uh, I do have a tash, yes. And uh, guys, we're going to win the Euros. Hey! It's all right. It's, uh, everything's fine. Brazil's Brazil. not in Europe. They're not it? doing it. Exactly. Doesn't matter. They're not in They're irrelevant. They're not unless, unless they've 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 got an Australian type deal. Oh, like Eurovision. Exactly. Right. <laughs> okay. That would put a cat among the pigeons. It'd really would. be annoying, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> really annoying. <laughs> yeah. Any any of the other ones other than Argentina and Uruguay and yeah, Chile, Colombia. Yeah. Mm. Peru. It's, not, it's not a good idea, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say get Sri Lanka involved, but they'd do something to spite me, wouldn't they? <laughs> yes. But I, we'd be all for that. Yeah, Imagine getting fair. Uruguay in the Euros <laughs> just getting absolutely kicked to death in the opening <laughs> game you've got yourself Europe why yeah I mean it's nearly there in the name Jim it kind of works I think oh, Peru Euro? no not quite um, uh, England 0 Brazil 1 England suffered the first defeat at Wembley in 21 games and of course um, they got the uh, the Endrick experience uh, the 17 year old scored the winner for those Brazilians he is a formidable looking little chap when he came on the pitch and I just thought mm, yes he looks like a wonder kid scored the goal mm. he, what is he 62 million pounds I think Real Madrid have something signed like him for yeah. for something like that but uh, but one could call England's performance a bit flat and uninspiring yeah you, you were there Marcus do you think the, the, mm, I loved the, it. the flag made a difference <laughs> I liked it I yeah. the flag I on the back of the shirt stand on a chair and see everything I doctored my England flag which I'd take to look like that one I was waving it away <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think the kit probably did. Yeah. Make Could you have been a bit more passionate in the stands? Yeah. That, that would have helped. Could you have been the twelfth man? Yeah, I, I, I think I was the only passionate one. I tried my damnedest to get a Mexican wave going. It didn't happen. Right. Um, but anyway, England's flat and uninspiring performance, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, uh, it was worrying in a number of regards, wasn't it? Because as we've said before, you know, if if Harry Kane is missing, mm. that's potentially disastrous. And Harry Kane is a human being, so mm. could mm. get could injured at any time. Did they have these conversations in France by going, oh? Killing Mbappe is if he's missing. <laughs> well, you would expect so. Surely, any 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 team is going to miss its best player. Isn't to be it? fair, but they have that conversation the whenever whenever Giroud's not playing. <laughs> they do. They, they do. do have that fear that they they lack a bit. You know, bit someone who is. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll talk about France later. So. Yeah. I think just you know, it's a lot of it's been said a lot over the weekend. But England have been geared around Kane for such a long time that yep. when he's not there, mm. um, everything's a little bit janky, isn't mm. it? And a little bit kind of. Um, uh, the, the, the connections aren't there in the same way. That the, the, the style of play has to change in a way that uh, is very difficult to just essentially improvise or to um, change with like one short training camp in advance of it. So mm-hmm. that's the the concern is that we are going to need all of our best players fit. I worry about left back a bit as well. Yeah. Um. In I mean, it's probably going to be Trippier if he's fit, but he's you know probably not um, the player he was even a year ago potentially. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Trippy would do a better job, I think, than than Ben Chilwell on that yeah. current form. Mm. And sure, I think he's not scheduled back until sort of May, which is quite late. Mm. Yeah, I think still, it's still bloody go as well. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. You know, I think it, it depends. I mean, if Trippy is fit. He, he will be, he will get the nod, won't he? And I think that might mm. save Southgate from making a, making that right. risk on Shaw. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, Joe Gomez came on, of course. I mean, I think he'll definitely go to the Euros. Um, in fact, with Maguire pulling out the squad, I quite like him to start at centre half against yeah. Belgium, yeah. quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. There's some weird. It was a weird game in that um, it was obviously it was shit, um, but the, keenly all contested. Of the, all of the, from, Debutants kind of had positives about them as well. Yeah. So th- yeah, these are I'm, weird I'm games, great. aren't they? They're not. You know, yeah. They're not anything that you sh- you, you can yeah. read too much into in terms of sure. what it's going to mean for competitive football. Did you enjoy Anthony Gordon, Peter? I did, and I think Anthony Gordon enjoyed Anthony Gordon. <laughs> uh, he was very much like uh, you know, best day of my life. Uh, it really sort mm. of meant something to him, and I think that's rare testimony I think in, in these days you're talking about the man who won the Euro under 21s last True, time yeah. and I believe was player of the tournament mm. I, mean, I don't know if he was England's player of the tournament or perhaps player of the tournament well that, that was quite a seminal moment in I suppose maybe that's a bit too strong for someone who's still still quite young but that was the moment because obviously he comes, comes off the back of what was quite a challenging first period at Newcastle um, goes to the Euros does well and then decides not to take time off to go back into pre-season mm. for this season Yeah, and I thought I, I thought he was really impressive. I thought mm. he was, you know, England's standout player, really, as far as someone who 
came in and did exactly what he did when he was picked. You know what they always say to debutants, and they always make a point of saying, Club "Do form. do what got you here." Mm, yeah, you know, keep doing that, and, and he did that. He didn't yeah. look he didn't look perturbed by anything at all. No. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I thought Gordon looked good. I think that he could be a handy option. I mean, Grealish is obviously con- seemingly continuously injured this season, and they, so there could be a, a spot there because when Rashford came on, I mean. His body language looked quite similar as it has done quite a lot this this season. But these are not really um, things that perhaps people are, are concerned about. I think people might be concerned about that midfield position yeah. next to Rice. I thought Gallagher did all right. I thought he did okay, but I think there's a little bit of split opinion. I don't think anybody's saying he did brilliantly. Mm. I mean, his passing was a bit off. He's got a good engine on him um, and he can hurry and all those kind of things. But one could immediately say, "Oh, really? Was, was, I mean, is that yeah. is that too much of a compliment?" I mean, I think it's always handy to have a player like that. One thing I would say is, when Mainu came on for the for the short time he did come on, I thought he looked very composed, very assured, and I thought to myself, "For crying out loud, let's start him." Oh, <laughs> yeah? the, the, that one, that one turn, <laughs> that one having, turn, having watched Gallagher, as you said, like run around a lot, press a lot. Misfire a few passes. A younger Jordan Henderson kind of vibe. About yeah, that. Uh, maybe makes that turn. I'm like, right. <laughs> <laughs> having For, like a week before. Give him the keys. Uh, yeah, forget, having, forget everything that was said on Friday. Show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the week before, I've been like, look, he's only a kid. You know, yep. I think it's, you know, we watch United games mm. where it's, it's passed him by a bit, in part because mm-hmm. United are a bit chaotic. He did that, and I was like, "Fuck it!" Yeah. <laughs> is there a way we can age him? Yeah, I don't yes. know, like a barrel of vinegar for mature two him. months or something. <laughs> it was weird having having we mature menu. having like two little fellas come on and be like, oh. "Right, we're just watching the future now as well." Yeah, mm-hmm. especially Endrick, who has the physique of. Adama Traore. No, he he's got the he's got the <laughs> physique. There was a vibe about that. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, well, he looks more like a private school seventeen-year-old whose dad got him to take rugby far too seriously, yes, far too early. Yes, that's he's got it. proper like you know he's been in the gym since twelve. And you're like, well, that's why he's so short. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, um, but he but yeah, the minor, minor things interesting, and I'm a little bit worried that I thought this mm. that an eighteen-year-old who made his Premier League debut this year, mm. regardless of how good he is, given all the lead up to A, knowing that this was a problem position, mm-hmm. not least because Calvin Phillips wasn't getting game time at Man City, did make me think, right, we're not really that, we're not really that further along in this conversation mm. at all. Mm. Did, and like, I didn't see, sorry, I, I didn't see this game as a backward step. I just kind of saw it as, saw it as a bit of a standstill, which is also a problem. Yeah. I think that's right. Do you think, think that right, we yeah. sort of willed Menu into existence then? <laughs> Maybe. Just, just a collective English, English fan uh, kind of will. Yeah. Love, yeah. I think. Well, I think we needed something, didn't Manifested we? I mean, him. <clears throat> I mean, ahead of the 2018 World Cup, I mean, there was there was a couple of players with with very little international experience, but of course they had a lot more club mm. experience than Mainu. So that's what yeah. we're talking about. Pickford only had three caps going into the tournament, and Maguire had five. And I know Maguire has his critics now, but he was very good in that tournament and has been an ever present for the England side. So, I, I, you know, and and as, as well, you can look at German squads in in the past where. Um, again, they've they've not been afraid to do that. And I, th- I think it is the case with Mainu. Like, if he's good enough, he he, he plays. The, the, I just the, the composure and and the, the 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 way he kind of carries the ball. There's not many English players like that. And I think that with England, you know, they did try and press Brazil. They did try and play kind of high. But Brazil, despite their injuries, and England have had got injuries as well. But Brazil did have a lot of injuries. They still had a very impressive front. Line yeah. made Very, a lot of debuts themselves as well. They as well. did as well. So three yeah. in their back four. <clears throat> so it's important yeah. to, to to point all this stuff out. But Vinicius Junior is still Vinicius Junior and yeah. Paquetá and, and Rodrigo and all the and, and so they've they've got quality in there quite quite clearly. Um, and I think the worrying thing is that how many times they they got through and and how shaky England looked at the back. And this is the thing: if England try and play quite an aggressive, squeeze them into their own half type of play. The vulnerabilities at the back are shown. And Walker's mm. recovery pace has been crucial for England. And, of course, that was the whole the whole reason why he got injured, really. He was trying to keep up with Vinicius Junior. Yeah. Now, again, one can say, well, there's not that many players like that. Well, OK, but you can't really kind of go on that and say, well, there's a lot of crap team. You know, we probably won't come up against that many quick players. So, therefore, it's OK. But I, that's my concern is that it's still the same questions at the back. Personally, you know, I know people, you know, think I'm a well, I am a Southgate apologist. Let's be frank, but my my even at this late stage, my 
gut feeling would be a stick Joe Gomez in next to John Stones. And I know, obviously, I've defended Maguire. And I think and Maguire should still go back. That was that would be what I would think. Yeah, it's I don't a, think it's Southgate. a sensible option. At this yeah, point. yeah, I don't. I know Gomez hasn't played that much at centre half recently. For but, he, but he's an excellent centre half. But he's a brilliant centre yeah. half, and he has played there a few times for England, even though it was a while ago. And I, I would be tempted to play Mano in front. I don't think that's going to happen. But that, honestly, after that. You get these gut feelings and so on. I think that's what I'll probably do. Can I throw two things? And Belgium at... is a big game. Yeah, right? of, of course it yeah. is. Yeah, but can I throw two things at you? Because, as you say, you're a Southgate apologist, but also you were you were there and you watch a lot of England. I the thing that concerned me a bit on Saturday was it seemed like England's players were really far away from each other. There was that, yeah. And considering the <clears throat> technical skill on the you know England put out on the mm-hmm, field, mm-hmm. that didn't need to be the case. <clears throat> and and the other thing I'd say, I'm. Southgate, I think, is going to be judged longer, long term on Phil Foden, mm-hmm. ultimately. And obviously, you know, Foden hasn't done all that well in an England shirt compared to obviously how he is at City. Yeah. But it feels like he's someone that this, this period of England is passing him by, not necessarily through his own fault. Yeah, I mean, World Cup, he had moments because he scored against yeah. Senegal and stuff. But I mean, it's all ancient history now. But I think. The reason for that is because Southgate has prioritised Jude Bellingham in that yeah. in, in that, that side. That's space. that's what he's done. Yeah. You know, England actually were defending at times almost like a four four two. The way he mm. presses, he was right up there with Watkins. So so Bellingham, you know, but I think with 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 Foden, yeah. I mean, look, it could be just one of those games. You know, Foden does have an important game for Man City soon, or the, or there is the Belgium. Like yeah. I know that it will be different in the tournament. The the focus, the sharpness. Every, the, it's all going to be there. We know this, you know. We shouldn't get too hit up at friendlies. I, yeah. I mean, do do you are, are you suddenly thinking France are crap because they lost to Germany? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, no, your opinion not, yeah. on France has not changed one little no, jot, has absolutely. it? Absolutely. And I think as well, I'm not really concerned about um, th- this idea that Foden isn't quite doing it in an England shirt because I think he's a player of such quality. It's just it is just inevitable once he gets you know. And also a different. But you're right in saying about Kane. You've got a very different front man there. Mm. Who you know he had a chance, the bounce was slightly high or whatever you want to say, but he'd be disappointed he didn't score. I think also from what we've said and, and and Luke has said about about Ollie Watkins, I think he's got to start Tony against Belgium. I think he basically said that. Yeah, um, I mean, all being well, much, yeah. neither would really play. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not like the big decision that perhaps we think it is, but it's a decision that still needs to be made. Yeah, that's spot on. I was looking at it and thinking, God, so what is the solution to Kane? And I was thinking, I think it's, it's something you mentioned on Friday about Bellingham being a false nine. And then I was like, well, actually, like Kane's injury record is exemplary for England, really. Mm-hmm, I think yeah. he's mm. like 22 games in major tournaments, World Cups and Euros for England. Like, he doesn't really get injured that often. No. He's had a winter break. Um, and there's, uh, yeah, obviously, he has an injury at the moment, but... You kind of bank on the fact that he'll just be there regardless. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's what you've got to do, but you do need backup, and I think that. But it's a different kind of backup now, isn't it? With the, which we yeah. which we saw against Brazil, yeah, because he's everywhere because yeah. he's in midfield. There's a little bit like suddenly, you know, it, um, there was a lot of talk in the aftermath of the game about all this space England had in the middle, and it's like, well, yeah, it's because a six foot three bloke who's like <laughs> you know four foot wide is yeah. usually the one like. Dominating that middle channel, mm. isn't it? Uh, the, yeah. the, the, I mean, we had a lot of chances. England had a lot of chances at like the far post. Like Brazil just didn't shut anything down, yeah. and but they just couldn't couldn't get it into the centre to get it to get it in. It was it was really disappointing that we didn't make the most of that. Well, yeah, there was there was definitely moments where England had the ball in sort of fairly promising areas. Mm. But you're right. I mean, Chilwell's crossing let him down. Um, I, th- 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 there was nothing really. I mean, England didn't really create many at all. I mean, Brazil created more chances. More, how do opt? I think it's opt that they say sort of big chances, if you like. Mm. I think they conceded more big chances against Brazil than they did the whole of the World Cup. Wow. Right. You know, so again, that tells its own story that it is different at tournaments mm. and so on. Um, but I understand, but, but sometimes these games are actually quite handy. I mean, I remember ahead of Euro 2016 when England, do you remember when they went away to Germany, yeah. were 2 0 down mm. and came back and won 3 2 with goals from Kane, a lovely one from Vardy Dara. I remember coming to the studio and Luke just went, this is the last thing we need. You know? <laughs> Actually, you know what? One of the things yeah. that I think will be useful going forward, and, and you know, Southgate has, has hinted at this himself, um, which is the the treatment Jude Bellingham got, and like, a lot of you know, <sighs> yeah, the, the Brazil were pretty pretty foul heavy, weren't they? In general, well, Pakistan should have been sent off. I'm that, glad he wasn't for the sake of yeah, the it would have been it would have been a value to absolutely nobody for yeah. him to be sent off. But it happens at tournaments sometimes, doesn't well, it? Sometimes yeah. you get you get roughhoused, you get shit house. You're not expecting mm. it. It can ruffle you. You can lose your rhythm. 
and and, and a, a thing like that can upset your rhythm and before you know it you, you're out and you can't believe it's happened to you yeah and it's a it's a good reminder that that can come out from anywhere when you're not expecting mm. it and it, it, Bellingham in particular is likely to be the recipient of it my so, concern with Bellingham is that he responds mm-hmm. yeah and he went in a heavy one which he got booked for and rightly so but I just think okay we don't need that yeah, yeah. he's a big he's uh, the thing I'm, I'm not so much concerned about that because you know that that retribution is is actually quite controlled because he was mm-hmm. pretty good after that he just wanted to get you know get a piece of something in my one concern is he loves talking. He does, mm. yeah. And he loves talking to the referee. Yeah. And he does that. Does it in a way that is... And he speaks a few languages. <laughs> <laughs> so he, knows, he knows all the bad words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, he, but he does it in a way that seems, you know, outwardly, because we can't hear it, quite mm. personable. But little things, like, some refs have no truck for that. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have no truck for you. you know, yeah, yeah, like, you know, put your hands on them in a he way does, that he does seems it a, quite friendly. Yeah, but... he does it in a way, in, 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 in a kind of, let me advise you, Mr. Referee. Yeah, on yeah. And there are one or two players, I mean, Roy Keane, obviously, did it very aggressively but it was as if he was like I'm not happy with that decision you made you need to rethink that next time yeah. and you've got to be yeah. careful as you say <laughs> especially at international level because the referees will be told probably to clamp down as they always referee, are referee I know where your car is <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, the old uh... keep, sm- keep smiling because the camera can't <laughs> can't pick up what I'm saying yeah. I will kill you <laughs> but, but more, bro- more broadly on the, on the Bellingham thing I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that and I think Southgate I think he was put to Southgate last week because obviously Bellingham's missed the uh, missed a few games for Real recently and one of them was through suspension through arguing with the referee essentially <laughs> that's right yeah um, and Southgate says Southgate says um, what I will not do is have Southgate warns arguably the best player we've had in decades all over the back pages I know that's great fodder Ooh, uh, which is good, but it's obviously it doesn't yeah, it doesn't yeah, rule yeah, out the yeah. fact that, that he's having a conversation behind <laughs> closed doors. I mean, it's it's a thing that England unavoidably have um, suffered from at tournaments, isn't it? Silly moments like that where mm. somebody you mm-hmm. know uh, a game has changed because someone gets sent off, and that's you know it's not to say it's likely from from Bellingham or, or any particular rare, individual, but, 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 yeah, but, it... but devastatingly so when it's happened. So I, I mm. think it is something they'll think about. But yeah, he can't he can't single players out going you watch your mouth, can he? Yeah, and, and also because it's happened in those high profile situations, it should mean it should mean it's less likely to happen now. Yeah. Literally had a documentary about a bloke who, <laughs> who you know, who was vilified for that for, you know, a large mm. start of his England career. True. So. And, and human beings have got a great track record from learning from the past, don't they? Famously. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I mentioned for Esri Konza came on. Uh, not an easy game to come on. No. no. Especially, <coughs> especially in his secondary position as well. I know he's done it recently with yeah. Cash being out for Villa. But... Secondary position and also the bloke who is the quickest man in England is gone off because he was trying to keep up with one of their blokes. Anyway, good luck. <laughs> there's, your, there's your debut. Um, yeah, so he, I mean, he did okay kind of thing with, with Conzo. I mean, it'd be interesting to see who he takes centre-half-wise. We know it'll be Stones and Maguire. Um, I, I, I really want Gomez in there. Could it be Conza? I mean, Lewis Dunk, when he came on, he did look a little bit slow for me. Yeah. Now, you are looking against, you are against, you know, an incredibly quick opposition, but still, you got, you, that's no argument from Dunk. Yeah. Well, have you seen him? You yeah. know, like, but he... I like Dunga. I think he's a good player and, he's, and his improvement has been incredible over the years, um, especially recently, of course. But I, I did think he looked a bit slow and surely maybe looking at, you know, other backup options or, or, or something like that. Quite, yeah. good, quite good with his feet. Could be good to close out games. Well, but, the, but the thing is, though, if you want to press, press high, then, you know, but yeah, maybe closing out, I mean, heading the balls away. The <laughs> other thing, the other thing, although that's what got him, him in trouble. True, true, yeah, no, no, no. I would say also, if, we, if we're going from a squad of 26 to 23, you mm. probably lose the vibesman position, don't you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> so you're saying Jordan Henderson's not going? Mm. Yeah. Connor so Cody's got to, you know, buy his own ticket. Yeah. <laughs> 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 got to get him in there somehow. Well, uh, Rico Lewis and James Trafford have been promoted from the under 21 to the senior squad as Walker Maguire and Sam Johnson have been ruled out. So Maguire's not there. So again, great chance for um, someone like Gomez or maybe Conza to be uh, put in the uh, put in, gonna, in the centre half. Who are we going to kick the kick the ball into the back of though? That's a question. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't yeah. it? Maguire is yeah. Yeah, right when Maguire was telling him to calm down as well, which is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we really cherry on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone calm down. What? what? <laughs> and the way that's not my fault Carl, Carl Walker's reaction like, oh Harry again let's go to Amsterdam where the Netherlands beat Scotland 4-0 Scotland now without a win in the last six games 
having lost friendlies to England, Spain, France and the Netherlands in that run. So, I mean, you know, yeah. some yeah. decent Tough opposition. opposition. It's mm. important context, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Andy Robertson wasn't happy after the game. He said, the fact we have walked off the pitch 4-0 is unbelievable. We can't keep doing this, going into our old ways against the big teams. I mean, the, the word profligacy has been used uh, many times by my accountant, for example, but this <laughs> could, not have, could, not have, could not have been more... Profit a, a response for, yeah. from Scotland. I, like I mean, they had so many chances. Shanklin and was, I yeah, do Shanklin not know. The bar was... Yes, yeah. I, you are right to how, say that. I don't know how they managed to get themselves. In this yeah, position. I mean, this is exactly what they're talking about, though, isn't it? Like they, I mean, they were, they looked the better team in the, mm. at the beginning of the game. They, were, I think, they possibly shocked the Dutch a little bit with how well they controlled yeah. the ball. And well, how also well how they, they, they harried them as well. You know, yeah. Dutch trying to play it out from the back. They yeah. just played into Scotland's hands it, time and time mm. again. But like, I mean, obviously, Steve Clark's absolutely gutted, and it, it, he was talking about how the approach changed significantly at two 0 and they seemed to sort of, kind of just essentially abandon their game plan, uh-huh. not really know what they were doing, and then. I mean, it's a, it is astonishing that this ended 4-0, like look, looking at how the game actually played out and, and that's got to be a concern, right? A couple of late goals is is kind of, uh, you know, testament to that, the way mm. that it, it was just like, ah, oh, bollocks, you know, we've kind of mm. thrown this away. Um, and I, 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 yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, they had the same amount of shots as the Netherlands, of course. Steve Clark called it painful. Um, and if they'd have come off having lost, say, 2-0, Think oh, we shouldn't have lost two uh, four nil. The scoreline is quite damning, so we'll see what they can um, produce in their in their second uh, game, of course. But yeah, I mean, losing games against those big sides, you can justify it and say, okay, well, the big teams, you know, you hark back to qualification where it obviously really matters. Well, they beat Spain, of course, um, but it would be a shame for them going into the tournament on a little bit of a, a, a low ebb, I suppose. I think they're they're feeling about it and talking about it in the right way. The, like the whole point of this period of you know the Scotland national team is about, you know, going toe-to-toe with those big teams. And, like, the reaction to this from fans as well was really interesting because, yeah, like, obviously they played well, but, like, you, you still get pumped 4-0. Yeah, that's you can't, right. Like, gone are the days of thinking, well, actually, we, you know, we were toe-to-toe with them for a good 65, 70 minutes. Yeah. Like, it's kind of not the point anymore. No, it isn't the point anymore. And <clears throat> they're going to have to pick themselves up and, uh, and, 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 and go again. I mean, they've got Northern Ireland on Tuesday, you'd fancy them for that. Yeah. So that could be a bit of a sort of a confidence boost and no disrespect to Northern Ireland that Scotland are the better team. If they would not to get a result then, I think it would be a real shame for them to to, to close the international window, I'm now calling it, uh, on that note. Um, did you enjoy uh, Tiani Rinder's opening goal? Oh, Oof, oh Judge beauty. Rinder's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely strike, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, from the Dutch's point of view, I mean, they kind of trot off the pitch thinking, oh, we won 4-0. I mean, I don't think they'll see that in, in the Netherlands like that because they had a few issues and, as I say, conceded mm. a lot of chances uh, against Scotland. But, I mean... They have got some exciting players coming through. They do. And, and, you know, you know I love old Ronald Koeman as a manager. You know, he's, yeah. he's there. He want, this is a late birthday present from him. He wants an even <laughs> more ridiculously late present, as we, as we spoke about winning the Euros. I, I, I know people aren't really fancying them and, and that performance may not convince people either. But, again, you look at some of the experience, you look at some of the players they've got. Yes, it's not there on the same level as France or maybe not even Portugal. Mm. But I don't think it's ridiculous to think they could have a good tournament. No, I think they're also <laughs> in a nice position where there's not a huge amount of pressure on them. And they've got play, like kind of youngish players like mm. Daniel Mallon and um, um, Javi Simons as well coming through who are yeah. real, real talents who I don't think there's going to be this kind of, you know... Um, terrible pressure on them to perform they, they may play with a sort of freedom and I, th- I think they're probably going to give us some some good moments at the Euros yeah well, I think that's it they, they've got a lot of players to like be quite exciting but they're shonky as aren't they yeah but I think Jim's right they've got moments in them yeah, yeah they'll be fun to watch moments can win your tournaments um, but they often are not enough to win your tournaments uh, as we bloody well know uh, before we go for a break uh, Ireland uh, drew nil nil with Belgium who are playing England Tomorrow evening, of course. John O'Shea's first game as interim manager. I like it. That's lovely, yeah. isn't it? It's a lovely old job. Lovely old job. The former Sunderland man, as he's well known as. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there has been rumours of Chris Coleman coming in as manager. I don't think that's gone down too well mm. in Ireland. Um, but, yeah. I mean, who, who do you go for? Give Roy Keane the job. Come on. <laughs> Cowards. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, given how his stint went last time, I can't imagine that he'd want it. No, of course he doesn't want it. I've just yeah. are the same people above you. You know, like the the um, 
the party sesh monsters or the ladies <laughs> of this world. Yeah, are they, are they still? I, are they still? Do you know like, what? I, a ball up there. I don't yeah, know. No, so yeah, uh, but no. I mean, if we, we, yeah. we went back to the leaving do. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I I don't know who they go for now. I mean, they they really tried something with Kenny as we spoke about, and it just didn't mm. work, which was a shame. So I don't know. Never know. John O'Shea may um, impress. I mean, they might have been a better result for them had Evan Ferguson put away his penalty. Mm. A little slip in there, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Straight yeah. down the middle. Straight Off down the, the middle. Yeah, shame, shame, shame. All right, everybody, coming up in the second half, we've got some incredibly uh, quick goals, a uh, little bit of domestic football. Oh, and Sven at Liverpool. Mm. See you in a moment. <laughs> Abrió la cancha otra vez con Cabrejas, el centro al área. Le queda Scaramucci y la volea. ¡Gol! ¡Gol! Well, back to the football ramble. That was a commentator in Argentina who left his auto tune on quite Why was it even on? Run. Yeah. <laughs> What, what Maplin's based disco in pouring did you get that from? I knew you'd have a problem with the sound. <laughs> <laughs> Who set this to T Pain? Not again. <laughs> Lovely stuff, that. <laughs> Thanks to Friend of the Ramble, Annette, uh, for choosing that clip. You can become a friend of the Ramble too by heading over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. You'll also get access to the Discord where the patrons have been floating the theory that the new Brazil manager, Doraval Jr., is a Didier Deschamps in disguise. Yeah. Uh, click the link in the show description to sign up. Bit of Walter Smith in there as well, maybe. Could be. Mm. Yeah, chuck them all in, I say. Mm. Classic stuff. France, zero. Germany, two. France is shit. France is shit. <laughs> yeah. France is shit. No, 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 no. But Germany are good now. <laughs> yeah, that's the fear, isn't it? Oh. That they're, st they're starting... Um, they've got they're, Tony Cruz back. Starting their cycle as underdogs. <laughs> they've got Tony Cruz back. It's, it's maybe because their um, friendship with Adidas ended. My new friend is Nike. Oh maybe yeah, they're, maybe yeah. that's that big move is. Uh, oh, and they've sabotaged our kit, pencil. haven't they? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's all about the kit. Oh, shit. Uh, Mind you, it. they're yeah. annoyed at their pink away kit. Apparently, in Germany, or are they? Who knows? Right. Mm, I just I smell a rat here. Well, uh, I tell you what, they are good at is starting games. <laughs> mm. um, Florian uh, Wurtz with the opening goal after seven seconds. Incredible! What a goal! I mean, N I, Nagelsmann was like, I don't know how. Esque. I don't know how to, how much to celebrate. Yes, I'm just like. It's too early. It's way yeah. too early to do any celebrating. Well, the goal that early, you kind of like, you You feel like you're an England fan. We if, know if, if I'm celebrating this point, it's going to go into montage when we get hammered. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, yeah. You score an early goal, like everyone is just so mm. pumped. But as you say, there's a long time to go. <laughs> uh, seven seconds, though. And, and it was clearly a routine. Uh, you remember that routine that, um, was it Barcelona tried it? Bournemouth did it brilliantly at Bournemouth Fulham. did it yes. really well, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, there, was, there was a bit of a routine. I think this is, this is definitely something, isn't it? Because the way the pass, the way the runners just bombed forward. Yeah, they all know where the, they're going. And it created the space yeah. Yeah. for, yeah. for Vert to sort of hung back. Cruz obviously picks him out. Now, there was a lot to do. <laughs> and there was, I think there was a nick off the defender. Do you say yeah. Cruz picks him out? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Does, he, does he not just like play it? To it, mm. there was no real obstruction in the way, was there? Mm. What do you mean? In terms of getting the ball to rather words. than rather than I mean, finding him in a crowd. Up. Yeah, I, I think he made it sound like oh, he's threaded it through. So. Well, he kind of okay, fine, <laughs> right? Cruz passes the ball to him. Thank you. Right, and uh, none of this fancy football. language. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> and German and, and route one and France's low block couldn't <laughs> deal with it. Uh, but Germany on the transition, yeah, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, but Tony Cruz an, an assist straight away, mm -hmm. making a difference. Cruz. Three years. After um, he, he retired from international football, it's his first appearance back, Jim. Cruz being back is is a huge boon for them, obviously. Not just because of the quality that he has, but if you look at him and Ilkay Gundogan in there, mm -hmm. but, but with the sort of the youthful energy and the invention of Jamal Musiala and Florian Wurtz in there, it is like that is a really, really well balanced midfield. Is Brassel doing that thing again? You know, the head of the last Euros where he, a well balanced attack, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talks up another side and then he mm. picks another side for his uh, underdog of the tournament. He's doing Germany down. He's, he's got something going on there, isn't he? I know what you mean. They, look, I, they're not in the best moment, uh, as as has been well documented. But this might be the beginning of turning that around, though, isn't it? Well, because, they I mean, certainly believe it. Well, France fell for it, didn't they? They just turned up and thought, <laughs> exactly. they, thought they won't need to. Uh, they can just sleepwalk to a win. But yeah. they didn't. Yeah, it's and hard to get the feel-good factor going if everyone already feels good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you That's, mean. You know, it's, what would that be? Like, the amazing 
feel factor. Yeah, the, the, the doctor feel amazing. Good, doctor feel good. <laughs> the, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling real good on this emotional plateau. It's just <laughs> not, it's not the same. You've got to have something to overcome, and Germany have had that. And this mm. is a this is a potentially a kind of vital step back in the direction of the of the feel good place. Frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> the feel good frenzy. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, friendlies can be meaningless, and and you don't read too much into them, but. Mm. I think it's different when you beat France in France. As you said earlier, yeah. my opinion of France isn't different. But if you're a Germany fan, you might be looking at that going, you know what, we you've might got, have something here. Yeah, you've, you've got to kind of spin it the way you can. And, mm. and the fact is they've beaten them and it was a huge win. And the, apparently the last time they beat one of the su supposed big sides and kept a clean sheet was on the aforementioned Lucas Podolski's unofficial uh, farewell match against England where he got the only goal in, 20, in 2017. But Cruz was brilliant in his return. He ran the show mm. and one again could argue that, ah, oh, France, you know, taking it seriously, da 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 da, da. Look, they're always going to, you always take it seriously. You always want to win. The competitors are yeah. growing out loud. Again, it could be different in the tournament, but Cruz going in there, I think, will just relax a lot of Germany fans. You go, ah, oh, there's a guy who's done it. There's a guy who knows what to do. Yes, he has been a part of some of their disappointments, but he's a quality, quality player. I mean, he's one of the best central midfielders, you know, in the last, I don't know how many years, you would argue. Rudy Voller once said of him that Cruz has been pissing Ice Cube since he was 18, which Oof. would be very Jesus. painful Oof. if it was literal. Um, you have had kidney stones. Uh, yeah. Gall stones. Gall stones. You don't What's the to... difference? Uh, one's in the gall bladder yeah. and the others are in the What's kidneys. What's the gallbladder for? <laughs> Can someone let me know? Whip it out. Whip it out. Get, like, rid, get of rid of it. it. And the get rid of like, it. I think it's for it's being outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Th they had them in northern France. It kind of spread, right, and, okay. uh, you know. But uh, but yes, <laughs> one for the history fans there. Mm. Hopefully, but yeah, well, but, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it all makes sense in the end. Um, but Cruz was brilliant, and Kai Havertz up front as well. Yeah, and obviously, you know, lots of people um, are, are still uncertain about Kai Havertz as a striker. Mm. But what he undoubtedly brings is a mm. sort of defensive solidity in that final third, and control is obviously going to be, be a big part of Germany's game. So that is also something that makes me think the fun might be over. Mm. If you, I mean, if you're unsure of him playing up front, when they played him left back, you he's, were less sure of that. Yeah, but he scored then. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he scored at the weekend as well. So Is this a Havertz experiment? <laughs> we're just going to play you in it. Yeah, you've got your touch. You, you know what you're doing. We're going to be okay. <laughs> From the French point of view, um, their defence is interesting to me. Now, mm. obviously, I have a huge Premier League bias here, but I think if you have William Saliba and Ibrahim Kanate as your defensive options yeah. and you play... Benjamin Pavard and um, Deo Upamecano at the uh, mm -hmm. at the weekend, and obviously this may seem very Premier League biased. Perhaps it is very Premier League biased, but William Saliba and Ibrahim Kanate seem like a, a, an imperious defensive pairing potentially. Don't tell them that. Yeah, but I'm 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 just intrigued as to why Deschamps hasn't hasn't really looked at that. Yeah, I mean. Do you remember the goal Pavard scored in the? Um, I do. 2018 World Cup. Absolute beauty. Yeah, but maybe you play him at right back. Yeah, true. I. I mean, those two players have got longevity playing under Deschamps, and as we know with our, with with Southgate, mm. th th that th matters. There's loyalty it? It there, and so, so perhaps there's that. I mean, yes, I, I agree with you. I mean, if those two are they're, they're they're fit and they're they're options, why on earth would you not do it? Maybe we'll. But I mean, Germany had um, a couple of players who I think one player who uh, Andrik who, who had only had uh, two caps and uh, Maximilian Mitterstadt he, st he started at left back mm. yes please. I mean it's like the, the, for his debut I mean they, they played really well yeah they did with not very much experience so maybe there is well I mean Andrik had trouble a, coming <laughs> yeah and Andrik it's fair to say I mean if you if you look at where he starts on the on the on the pitch. You know, if you looking at the formations as it's sort of lined up, I mean, around him he does have Gundogan, Cruz, Musiala, Rudiger, and Kimmich. You know, so if yeah. you're going to be surrounded, you know, put him in there. He should be okay. <laughs> I mean, he's, been, he's only one of them not got a fragile <laughs> shell, is it? <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's been important for Leverkusen's midfield, obviously, and we all yeah, the season exactly. that they're having. So it's um, it's annoying that actually thinking about but you it. Look at those names you know, just read off there. I mean, Testegen in goal as well. Like you have to take them seriously. Yeah. Again, they are or were a tournament side. But they've got it in their in their history very much so. I mean, yeah. the last sort of what World Cup and 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 you know the last few tournaments have been a little bit off for Germany. It's been it, it feels more like a blip. Yeah. yeah, and it feels unlikely that it will continue for this long. Mm. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And and that goal from Verts, by the way, we said um, seven seconds. Of course, it wasn't the quickest goal 
in, uh, in in international football, men's international football history, um, because Austria scored one earlier on that day, <laughs> which it, it, it's absolutely extraordinary. Six seconds. Yeah, you think to yourself, oh my goodness, yeah, what a start! But the I, Austrians got there first. I think it was a better goal as well because he one. kind of he takes it around. Uh, essentially the whole team in a way that you've done to me on FIFA an mm. annoying amount of times <laughs> while either humming the match of the day theme tune or yeah. going oh Jimmy <laughs> <laughs> very that cruel s- man isn't he does that sound mm. like me ladies and gentlemen I think it's better than the Germany goal because doesn't you, take a deflection uh, well as you said the, the Germany goal had a bit of structure to it it was clearly pre-planned Baumgartner clearly thought ah fuck it yeah, yeah. well you said I think they've been playing FIFA because the, the way he goes straight there's two defenders that come across. He shouldn't do that. Yeah. No. Like, you won't have thought of this. Yeah. Shouldn't have done that. Dubravka hadn't warmed his knees up yet. Yeah. Yeah, good point. And mm. and, and he took advantage. But it was a lovely finish. What, 25 years out. Yeah. He's still got to knock it in the corner. <laughs> um, oh, it's a brilliant, brilliant goal. Fastest goal in the same. seconds. Yeah. It can't be much quicker than that. I love the fact, though, that these quick goals mean that that San Marino goal against England in 1993 <laughs> or, when, or 94, whenever it was, gets just pushed up the list a bit higher. Right, okay, you know? yeah. So, it turns yeah. out of sight. <laughs> We're only doing top sevens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many more do we need before actually that's I haven't yeah. checked, Jim. I haven't yeah. checked. But, I, but th- having two this weekend... How many, how many was... FA Cup third round wins did Newcastle have to do <laughs> to get rid of Ronnie Radford? Ah, <laughs> oh, Ronnie. Same amount. Oh, dear. Uh, elsewhere, Denmark drew nil-nil with Switzerland. I suppose the only highlight of this game was Pierre-Emile uh, Hoiberg pushing over the referee because he was getting in his way. And if you've seen this... It is I think spectacular. Well within his rights. Do you? Genuinely. Do you think? Yeah. Really? I think, I, th- I, think, the, I think. I think the referee. Hoiberg. I think the referee. If he wasn't hit in the back, he would have been off and then some. <laughs> yeah, I think Hoiberg's a bit lucky that I understand that. I, I used to be in the. I don't know if it's still the case, but it, but the, the the feeling used to be like the referee's kind of like a, almost like a goalpost. Yeah. You yeah. see what I mean? And yeah, the ball yeah. hits him, and you, mm. you play on. Although the, the laws have been tweaked now. Turns around and starts kicking his heels on him. <laughs> and starts, yeah. Yeah. Goalkeeper comes up and puts his uh, water bottle next to him. Um, so I suppose in the spirit of that, like if the referee is there, like you just you know you can bounce off him or whatever. But I don't know. I thought Boing. it was. I thought it was a bit naughty, aggressive. Wasn't it? I thought naughty it was a little Marcus. bit naughty. You know when yeah. you have a and it's Hoiberg as well. You know when you have the slightest reason to do something and you do it a bit bad. Yes, that's it. Like and it tell us more about that. Yeah. <laughs> like. Like, like, like shoplifting, shoplifting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Me and, and Visha celebrate shoplifters. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. yeah, you nicked something out of necessity. You didn't have to take all those miles, bars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But <laughs> if, one... you, if you go to shop and there's no cardboard policeman in the window, uh-huh. uh huh, like most pound shops in Hartlepool, uh, right. you're allowed to. You're just allowed to. Really. It's the right thing to do. If and where the... can people get in touch with you, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> if that little concave mirror is smudged a bit, yeah. fine. Uh, get involved. Right, there we are. Get involved. <laughs> That's how society works. Yeah. Uh, Italy beat Ecuador 2 0 in a friendly last night. Uh, Spalletti uh, has banned PlayStation from the Italy camp. He said, if they need something to do at night, I'll give them homework and something to distract them. Right. I yeah, mean, maybe not in that tone, but he's an Xbox said, man, eh? Like no one's Yes, ever, that's the way around it. Like no one's ever played a video game instead of doing their homework. <laughs> 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 yeah, surely Xbox is the... Uh, is, I'm, cu- the I'm cu- You'd be curious as a Italy player, though, wouldn't you? To be like... What homework is he going to give us? Yeah, mm. oh. yeah, interesting. What would this? What would this actually be? The I'm history not. of the combustion engine. <laughs> yeah, here's the history of Napoli season last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I remember when Capello was, as we all do, as England manager, and when he took them to South Africa, and right. it was described as a prison camp or whatever, because mm. everyone was like, "You've got to be indoors." You know? And he could never understand the England players always wanted to do activities, and they always they were like kids. He felt like buzzing around. What he yeah, said yeah. in Italy, they would just kind of like sit around smoking. talk about football, <laughs> smoking. Uh, well, I mean, maybe not smoking, but that kind of vibe of well, having I mean, like, a. Having uh, a, having why, a why is that was smoking? It's, t- it's table tennis, isn't it? Like footballers are just they've got something wrong inside that makes them very competitive and they why does um, that make them wrong it just either. makes them wrong inside it's an unethical product for football we all know it um, uh, and, and when you, it. When you <laughs> they all just constantly when they're not playing football they have to play ping pong so take Which, the ping pong deals or, or golf yeah. or golf yeah darts is a big one for England as we know right yeah. okay yeah uh, and Lucas Podolski and Lucas mm. Podolski but yeah but the, apparently according to I think it was Capello the Italian players are just sitting Chill out, having a cappuccino and a and a, and a, and a, and a having a big old before midday yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all that. But maybe yeah. it's times are changing. Maybe in Italy, that's um, the Italian players. It's not the case anymore. Mm. Give them a darts board for crying out loud. Or a dart. 
<laughs> just one? Just a duck. Throw it in. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, let's come all the way back to some domestic football action because domestic football carries on. It does. You can it have endures. all this shiny international stuff, but there, the real football people are still going away in the Football League. Harrogate Town versus Bradford City was delayed 10 minutes because the linesman had a nosebleed. He was in fine fettle. He was in fine spirits, <laughs> even though his nose would not stop bleeding. Oh, dear. Poor, poor chap. You could hide a little... Um, Tampon in the handle of your uh, flag, couldn't you? Yeah, that's true. You could for, for yeah. such experiences. Yeah, if you're very, very well prepared for yeah. every possible for every eventual, eventuality. Yeah. Well, could you, I mean, you could hide a pepperami in there. Yeah. What else could you hide in a in a in a flag? What about when you're signalling for offside and it falls out into your mouth? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, a ridiculous question. I don't know why I asked it. <laughs> so um, it's 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 kind of if, is it a naked pepperoni though or is it in its little condom oh the condom well you could chew it and then spit out the condom yeah it would be an, it would be an astonishing did view. you ever used to eat the condom no yeah I used to chew, no, no, chew, no, I used to chew on the chew on the condom no not for me sounds like sounds like Vish and Marcus and everybody yeah, everybody does it then <laughs> no yeah. not, not for me it's man. a little treat even, even if I get um, you're a refrigerator man uh, yeah I don't mind a refrigerator no. uh, but even even if I have a chorizo I, I take the um, sheath the sheath off do you <laughs> Yeah. Like the metal bit you don't then. have to. You, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the, the old version of the, uh, <laughs> the pepperoni, pepperoni condom. The little, <laughs> little metal clip. Good for just, what ails you. Just get it straight down, yeah. <laughs> it's bloody good stuff, that. It is. Um, There's a tiny bit of meat just caught in the metal bit. Yeah, yeah I always it. kind of like, like gnaw at it. Don't steal, don't you, steal things hey, from me. You've got to eat it. You don't want an iron deficiency. Do you? <laughs> exactly. You've got to get it down, yeah. Uh, elsewhere, yeah, sorry, Harrogate and Bradford, that's all we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. uh, in League One, uh, Northampton mascot Clarence the Dragon had an altercation with uh, Derby County player Nathaniel Mendes Lang after the mascot picked up the ball when it went out for a corner. Yeah. Can't be touching the ball, mascot. But yeah. Mendes Lang gave him a little... Um, little Tap on the shoulder and he, he went down like he'd been shot. It was yep. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enjoyable. So, Mendes Lang might be the broadest footballer I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. It's quite yeah. incredible but shoulders. Mas- mascots are pretty big, aren't they? Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. That's true. Broad shoulders. Yeah. No, don't have opposable thumbs, do they? Yeah. But Ooh, are goodness. there any with opposable thumbs? Like human hands? Yeah. Imagine if you had like ma- mm. mascot big sort of plush body and then human hands. I think that'd be weird. It would be yeah, horrible, wouldn't be it? That would be pretty it? rough. Mm, yeah, we, I don't think any of us would, uh, <laughs> would, see would, that. would want no. to see that. Um, but let's talk about something genuinely good and, and football-y. Chesterfield! Chesterfield became the first title winners of the season this weekend. Uh, this is the National League, of course, not in the Football League. But Chesterfield now are Football League, mate. Yes. They are indeed. They went down in 2018, having had a 97-year spell in the Football League. But they're back, baby. And they've done it with aplomb. You have to admit, Jim Campbell. I don't know why you keep trying to deny them this. Uh, they beat Boreham with 3-0 at home. That means um, that they're through. They are, they're through to the Football League. Um, uh, <laughs> they're 21 points above second place Barnet. They've scored 100 goals and they've been top since the 16th of September. Yeah, to, to, to win a title in March is astonishing, isn't yeah. it, at any level? Come on, come on. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's absolutely glorious. And Paul Cook, him of the voice change fame and uh, former Pompey man, is, uh, is their manager. The voice change fame? He, do you remember when he gave that interview and he was sort of talking and said, oh, oh, oh he, yes. He, I thought he, he meant the um, uh, T-Pen uh, voice change right. man. What, as in like, all oh, the voice, the like Tom Jones? Yeah, the auto-tune <laughs> guy. Yeah. No, he doesn't need auto-tune. He's a, he's a <laughs> genuine himself. artist. He, yeah. he yeah. does it, he does it. Yeah, glorious for them. And Will Grigg has been firing the goals. He's back on fire. 25 goals in 38 league games. Oh, oh, nice yeah. to know he's still a flame, yeah. isn't it? How about that? Oh, oh, yeah. Unbelievable for Chesterfield. Let's finish... Uh, the show with something that obviously is tinged <laughs> with sadness, but it's also a lovely, lovely uh, story. Yeah. Uh, Sven Joran Eriksson fulfilled his dream of managing in the dugout at Anfield, um, specifically for Liverpool, because of course England did play there under his uh, his reign. Um, he led Liverpool legends in a charity game against Ajax legends on Saturday. I mean, this is just lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. really, really lovely to see. Yeah, and it, um, the main kind of bit that was being shared around, obviously, is was the video uh, of the different um, players, kind of. Uh, uh, give him, giving him um, a bit of love on, on your laptop. And this was, was, very, was very, very his sweet. former England yeah. players. Yes, it's very, very moving in part, very parts. Moving. Owen Hargreaves in particular, in particular his, yeah. his tribute to him was very, very emotional. And it's, uh, it's just lovely to see the affection in which he's held. Mm. And the game was a, a beautiful thing as well. And, you know, 
credit to everybody involved for, for making it happen. And yeah. I love how it was first half not so good, second <laughs> half good. <It's> just, <laughs> yeah. They were two nil down, yeah. came, came back to win. Nice to see Hench Fernando Torres yes. actually play a game as well. Yeah. Because he looks like a different person. It's he's nice not to see gotten that he can mobile. He's not gotten more mobile, has he? <laughs> well, <laughs> he no, hasn't but helped. He's, he still scored a goal. He and, did score you know, a goal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it in. But they like, like they really cared as well. Yeah. There was probably yeah. celebrations when yeah. the goals went in. It was it was really really lovely to see. Gabriel Cisse, of course, as well. Sven called it a beautiful day. And yeah, I just, just the way he, he was really, really happy about it. Because mm. I, I did think to myself, like, for a man who's like done so much in the game, this is, you know, h- how kind of made up would he be? Would he be sort of a bit like, ah, it's a token effort. Okay, fair yeah. enough. I'm happy to be. But like, he really was, you know, and I suppose when you get, um, or if, if, if one is, is, has horrendous luck and is diagnosed with that, then you see life in perhaps a different way. But it's just such a as I say it's obviously tinged with sadness because to see him walking around and chatting you think he won't be here for that much longer it's mad in it yeah it's, it's yeah sorry to sort of no, 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 like but that, but that is think, that's what, what we're talking about. You know. Yeah, it, it, I think the yeah, the like the nature of the sport is such that everyone cares so deeply about it, but you never show affection for the people yeah. who, I suppose, control your joy or give you that yeah. joy. So for someone to have to be able to have that moment, yeah. mm. and he would have had it with England fans in the past, uh-huh. and you know, club level as well. But for for a team, uh, he's not attached to it at all. For a team, he's not yeah. attached to, but for a sport <laughs> to be able to to show their affection to you and yeah, for you yeah. for you to be able to feel that. Because there will be, a, as, as you said, there will be a situation a few times where a stadium is standing mm. giving him a round of applause because yeah. he's passed. Yeah, yeah? yeah that's, that's right. He was able to see that. It'll yeah. be like him being his own wake almost. I know in, what you in mean. A sort of like <clears throat> professional sporting yeah. sense. And that's a, a, a wonderful thing that he was able to experience. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAST Creator Network. Do join us on Wednesday. Of course, in the meantime, follow us on X, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Football Ramble. And follow us on Spotify as well. Thank you, Jim Campbell. Thank you. Thank you, Pete Donaldson. Farewell. Thank you, Virginia Hanferaja. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you on Wednesday. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.